Hello, hello, everybody. It is 3.22 p.m. Central Time on the 14th of October, 2020. It's Wednesday here in the United States. Hope you're doing well. We are here to talk about seismic events. If you don't know where you're at, you're on the Earthquake 3D live stream, or you're watching on YouTube in a post-recorded event that I've uploaded, but... Guys, we're here to talk about the earthquakes that have struck over the last 48 hours. We're using the USGS and the EMSC coming out of Europe. And the reason we're looking at about 48 hours, it just gives us a good idea of the areas that have moved over the past couple days, which helps us to determine the areas that are going to move in the next several days. Now, finally, if you're new, let me just quickly explain the higher off the planet the earthquakes are shown, the deeper they are into the Earth. And these earthquakes, for instance, this one here off the coast of Japan, right on our letter D. The letter D stands for deep earthquakes. And it's a forecast point where we watch for new deep earthquakes to occur. And in this case, it's down below the plate where a hammering action, I believe, comes in from the underside of the plate in the magma down below and then goes up into the more solid rigid plate. But the Full focus of the combined force of all the waves forms a singularity or what we call a concentric wave or a spike singularity where all the wave focuses in on itself. And we'll get back to this in a minute, but let me turn on a display capture so you can see what I see a little bit better. And we'll start here where our deep earthquake is in Japan. Next to it, going up to the north, we have a 4.8 and a 4.4. And what I'm going to show you on these earthquakes is they're all following the plate boundaries. For instance, over here in the West Pacific, you see where these thick red lines are from the USGS defining where the plate boundaries are. And our earthquakes match when we use the USGS and EMSC to get a better picture because the USGS isn't reporting half these earthquakes. <laughs> right? They're, they're only reporting certain earthquakes, so they're leaving them off. They're missing hundreds and hundreds of 4.0 and greater earthquakes every year. Okay, so here, a spread of earthquakes going all the way across Philippines last night and this morning. And if we go back to the USGS map, you'll see across the plate boundary up to the north, going up to Japan, where we have the same sized earthquakes. So down here, we have a 4.7 and a 4.8, 4.2, 4.5, 4.3. Up to the north, we have a 4.8 and a 4.4. So it's the same sized energy. One is spreading out across all of Philippines, going up to Taiwan and dead ending into Taiwan. The other is going from where our deep earthquake is up to the north. Now, in between, we have Suwanese Ajima volcano that has started to come back alive here south of Japan. It's right at that middle fulcrum point, that middle point between our sets of earthquakes if we go along the lines of the plate boundary. So a line of quakes comes up to here, and another line of quakes up here, and the middle point in between has eruptions going on right now. Aziz, guys, look. Hey, I was four or five days late. Get your prawns off the bobby. Hey, look at this. I'm serious. A 3.7 struck up here on the east-northeast side of Australia. Now, we have to go back to last week when we issued a warning here when the 4.0 came in, and we told you to watch for upper threes to near four to pop off at the center of the plate, down to the southwest, down by Perth, down to the southeast, down by Sydney. And what happened? All three other locations, the center, the southwest, down by Perth, and the southeast, down by Sydney, all three got hit. And I got on last week, and this was the only spot left to go. And I said, well, you know, what's going on? Give it a couple more days. Well, here we are four days later, and the 3.7 hit. So all of Australia was displaced when that push came in this past week. Again, up here where the arrow is. So just wanted to check that off the list if you were keeping track. A huge silent zone going from our letter D here at Eastern Indonesia all the way across Indonesia up into China, where we make a bend and go all the way over to Afghanistan where our 4.4 is. This is 48 hours worth of reported quakes. So the distance here is like three United States across Huge, huge area, but let me show you the spot again on the USGS plate boundary map. Earthquake up here and earthquake down here. Notice how many are missing on the USGS 24-hour feed, right? Again, using the Europeans, it really helps. You can see we have an open area where the halfway point between the earthquake here and the earthquake here brings us into Sumatra, Indonesia, Smith Island, 
but northwest Sumatra, Indonesia, again, halfway point around these bent curves of the plate, brings us in right here. The open middle point of our silent zone. And on the western side, we have energy that's transferred out over towards Africa, for instance. Here we have a five point, what was it? Five, let's get an actual magnitude on that. Mm, it's hard to see. 5.2, 5.1. I believe that's where it is. Yeah, 5.0. So this is a fracture zone, and you can see it makes a stair step up to the north. And where it goes to, that's where another earthquake has struck, 5.3. So a 5 and a 4.7. By the way, if we add these two earthquakes together, the 5 and the 4.7, it's 5.047. We could round it up to a 5.1. And this 5.3 started out at a 5.2 and then was brought up to a 5.3. Why does it matter? They're two of the same sized earthquakes. And let's go over to the fracture zone here. You see it, stair step fracture zone goes up to the north. Now, again, USGS, they reported that earthquake yesterday, but it's not on the 24 hour feed. But nonetheless, it's right where the plate boundaries come together at the Gulf of Aden, right here from yesterday. And then up to the north, a 4.6 to 4.7. And that struck right on the plate boundary just south of it in Iran. That's where this earthquake is marked here. This is the number seven shaped bend of the Carlsberg Ridge. And I told you yesterday, when the earthquake struck here, energy should go up and around and into Iran and also go up and into Europe. And that could even go as far north as Israel. But right now, here we are, 4.6 right in the middle of all of it on the plate boundary in Iran. 4.9, let's just call it a 5, in the middle of the Caspian Sea from yesterday. And like I said, a 4.4 in North Afghanistan. This is all going to go into Europe. So 5.0 range activity coming in from the south and 4s and upper 4s coming in from the east. All going to be focusing in right in here. Let's turn down the rings and get a better picture of the spots that are swarming. So currently we're still swarming at Crete. I would look now between Crete and over to the east where the cluster of earthquakes are in eastern Turkey. Let me show it to you in the USGS map. Here's Crete. Let me make sure you guys can see all this. This is Crete, and we have earthquakes over here in eastern Turkey. Halfway point between the two, if we go down and around the curls and curves of the bend of the plate, brings us into Cyprus. So I would warn central Turkey down to Cyprus for a potential release that's bigger than what's on both sides. And on one side, like I said, we have fours and upper fours. On the other side, we have fives and we have an incoming push coming in. That would put it into the mid to upper five level that we have to warn right here at Cyprus for. Okay. Additionally, a new little outbreak took place over in Eastern Romania, 2.7. 2.6 struck at Bosnia and a little swarm also, well, not a swarm, a little outbreak took place. Not even a swarm at central Italy. Campobasso was also hit. That was on the warned list, Campobasso. And it's right at it, guys. I mean, that's right here in South Italy where the two is right next to it. Pyrenees, Spain, and Gibraltar also struck, going out and across over to the west. North Pole, or well, not North Pole, Arctic Circle, 3.6 on the fracture zone right next to our arrow. Man, I'm getting excited because we've got some stuff to talk about over here to the east, guys. Let's go in and show you. So, where do we begin? Let's talk about South America first. So, the equal distant, e equidistant, equidistant, spaced earthquakes all the way across South America. Going from Venezuela, right here, you say, well, there's no earthquake there connecting between the others to the south. Nevados, Nevado del Ruiz volcano erupted. Right in the middle of this, that's Colombia. Going down to the south, a spread of fours all the way into South Chile at our travels underneath point. The biggest of the bunch striking right in the middle in South Peru. I think it went up to five. Let's see. 5.0 right on the dot. And then look at this. Boom. All the way down to the east by southeast, a 4.9 to 5.0 earthquake also struck on our letter X. So letter X got hit, energy is transferred from one point to the other. We started out with a five in the middle and a bunch of fours, and we ended up with a five down here, or a 4.9 on our letter X. Let's show it to you on the USGS map, where, by the way, the USGS map shows nothing. So here, 
across all of Chile. They don't have anything going across like I do. I have an arrow going from South Central Chile all the way down and pointing down here to the southeast tip of the South Sandwich. But you have to remember what happened a couple days ago. I think it's still on the feed. Let me get it on here. There. 5.9 earthquake and a 5.7. Two separate quakes. One's piled right on top of each other. 5.9, 5.7. Two separate quakes, about 12 hours apart. But that 5.9, let's just call it a 6, because if we add them together, they struck right out here. And the arrow points down to the east-southeast on my map here. And that's right where we have the travels underneath point. So we started out with upper 5, low 6, and we end up with a 5 down here. It's only one magnitude loss of energy so far. That's not that much loss. Now, same thing happened to the north. Look at this. A spread of the same sized earthquakes went up and around into Venezuela. Like I said, a eruption here connecting between our sets of quakes. Well, down here, Sanjay and Uriventador are both erupting here in Ecuador. So that's three volcanoes erupting in between our two sets of quakes. It's a stepping stone path, though, isn't it? I mean, you, I mean, even the untrained eye. This is two to three days. Here's two days worth of quakes. So it really is a stepping stone path of the same size quakes. 4.9, 4.9 to the south, and up to the north, 4.4 and 4.4. Puerto Rico. Terremoto, guys. Earthquake swarm took place, and it's taking place right now following Cayman Island being hit. And we warned Cayman Island. Cayman Island is right here, this little speck on the map. But we warned it and right next to it yesterday or two days ago. The earthquake struck right here next to the stair step of the fracture zone. Now back behind it in Guatemala, we have our new push coming in across I told you guys about yesterday, which we'll get into in a second. But the previous push, marked in pink here, has now come over to here and now in white, a new outbreak is taking place. And it's going everywhere from Dominican Republic across all the way over to the Virgin Islands, where the center of it is the biggest outbreak and the biggest round so far is going up to mid-range 3. The number of earthquakes is increasing, though. Now back behind it, look, a 4 has struck next to Honduras. And we'll go back over and see where these dots are on the USGS map. They connect into Guatemala. And Guatemala has the new eruptions taking place, multiple eruptions, not new, but multiple eruptions at Fuego Volcano yesterday and the day before. Now, I don't know if it's on today. Oh, Copahue's on the list. Look at that. Now, I don't know if Fuego's on today, but it certainly was on yesterday, multiple times throughout the day yesterday. So Fuego erupted, and there's Nevado del Ruiz in Colombia. Okay, well, I opened those up just to see who's erupting. And in this case, we have an eruption in Popocatépetl in Mexico. We have multiple eruptions yesterday right here where the two red lines come together. And on both sides of it, seismic. Flowing out this way again. So there's going to be another earthquake, this time that should strike here, in between our 4.3 and our swarm over to the east at Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is still going to get hit. But by the end of this coming weekend, we should see a new earthquake break out next to Jamaica and Cuba. So it's still moving, guys. And... We have new fives back behind it all over here to the west. Fives and fours. It's all clustered across the coast of Mexico here. Let me turn down the rings so you can see this. So over the next few days, Central America due to move in a few spots as well. Not only over to the east following the fracture zones into the Caribbean over to here, but we're also due across this area across Central America. And I'm going to look right down in between where all the rings come in together. Not going to cancel the warning. We should see something in the upper 5 to low 6 level strike here next to El Salvador very soon. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll come back on and cancel the warning in a, in a few days. Let's see, we have five more days to go in this. So I talked about this two days ago in my update. Okay, United States, man, dude, we got to talk about these <laughs> separate earthquakes that took place since yesterday. Where do we begin? I guess we'll start in the lower 48, but just really quick, let me explain. Energy comes in from the northwest. Let me show you on the USGS map here. They have the red lines up here to the north. Oh, no. A new earthquake just struck up here. Hold on. A Ford just struck in Alaska. we got to go look that up. Okay. See where the red line is? The red line is the plate boundary between the Pacific and Laurentia, North America. And where that boundary is, that's where the earthquakes flow across. 
and they come in from over here, Camp Chatka. So the energy, I mean, not the earthquakes, the energy that causes the earthquakes comes in from over to the west, following those red lines, further over to the west, and that takes us to Camp Chatka. That's where other volcanoes are erupting, by the way, including Shivalush and Kluchevskoy. Those all erupted in the past several days, right in the middle of this open area, just like the middle of the open area down to the west-southwest. We're going to expect new seismic activity to come in there. Getting sidetracked, step, stepping stone path of earthquakes leads across that red line. Once we get into North America, well, look, there's at least two fours coming in across the northern part of Laurentia, which is on the deformed outer edge of the accretionary belt on the North American Craton. Look at the Craton graphic up in the northwest, up into Alaska. It's green, right? And then it meets in with a sliver of purple, and then that purple meets in right directly with the Craton interior, which is marked in a rusty brownish color. And these fours came in over the past 12, 24 hours, no, not even 12 hours, and they're both on the interior portion of the accretionary belt. But that itself is pushed by the red lines that I showed you over here. And if you hear a cat meowing, I apologize, guys. But here, this red line going up and around the accretionary belt or accretionary plane, that's along the exterior, the outside edge of the craton itself. So when we get a push that comes into it, it spreads into the plate. And the spots that get hit are weak points that we need to talk about. They're not just random points. For instance, up here in Alaska, a volcano is right next to this called the Selawik Hills. Over to the east, we're on the edge of the Craton directly up in Canada. And let me pull it up and show it to you. Let's show you the volcanic field first up in Alaska. And the earthquake is listed at the surface. So it's 0.0, .0 kilometer depth. It's shallow, it's right at the surface. It's a surface earthquake. 4.0 range. That's pretty interesting. We don't normally see surface activity in Alaska. So let's see what's up. What's here? And again, I already know what's here. Did I say the Selawik Hills? I apologize. Here are the Selawik Hills. And right here is a place called Espenberg. We've only had to talk about it once before, a long time ago, when the Bering Strait, the water out here, the body of water, got hit with an earthquake. But one of the northernmost areas of quaternary volcanism in North America, the Espenberg Volcanic Field, is located at the northern tip of the Seward Peninsula, just south of the Arctic Circle. The five Mars, the largest known on Earth, were erupted through the thick permafrost during the late Pleistocene, or the Ice Age, whatever. Largest Mars on Earth. You might see something similar over in Italy, believe it or not, but smaller. Wow. Well, there it is. So we have a earthquake at the surface at the largest Mars on the planet. And that's on the edge of the plate. Now over to the east, let's pull this one up, 4.1. And again, now keep in mind the edge of the craton. This just makes such a difference, the edge of the craton. And I'm going to show this to you on Google Earth. So let's pull the coordinates and go see over on Google Earth. And this is always fun for me to show this because when we found this, when I found this, as I was showing it, the professionals were in denial that there was a progression of earthquakes going across this. So to see what I'm talking about, maybe I need to turn the borders and labels off. We're up in Canada, and I'll turn off all the volcanoes too. There we are. So now you can see the mountain ranges themselves. And the mountain ranges are just the interior portion of the craton. And the earthquakes coming in along the plate boundary here, but once we get into the plate, the plate absorbs the energy. It goes into the interior of the plate. It tries to. And gets hit at the volcanoes that I just showed you up here in Alaska. And what about down here in Canada? Well, I don't know of any volcanoes here along the Canadian border, but get your Molson's, guys. We're going into Northwest Territories. Might get lost up in here. So what's up here? Well, uh, other than the edge of the Craton, I don't know of much. Now, I know down to the south, there's a few oil pumping operations, but I don't know of any up here. I don't think there are any. Now, it does look like there was a fire up here at some point, but that could be from a lightning strike. And when you see a burned area in Canada, we're not too shocked by that. Uh, down to the south, let's go. Looks like we have some sinkholes. 
Fort Laird. Ah, uh, who's the Laird of this land? Ah, uh, Susanik. Okay, let me show you an example of drill points down here to the south, just to bring you up to speed on how many drill points there are, why I'm looking for them. All of these little pads here in the ground, let's see if I can get a close-up on these. Uh, let's see if I can find an oil well. Some of them will have marked wells like you can actually see. It's not forestry. These are not forestry clear cuts. Um, there we go. So you can at least see the buildings on this. This looks more like a pipeline substation of some kind. But they're all over the place. Well, I, as soon as I say that, there aren't any of those pads. But we can find some that do. Here, here's another one. Ah, it's so grainy. Well, you can still see the shadow on the jack of the pump. All of those little pads are different oil pumping operations, and they just go on and on for miles. So they've drilled, they'll move them. Here's what. Here's another one. Mainly gas. Mainly gas. And it's all across here. I'm not exaggerating. They just keep on going for miles. Well, there's one. Again, now, they'll come in and clear a pad, drill on it, and then move. Uh, here's one that does have something in it. Man, it's such crappy imagery, but you can still see the shadow on that, I hope. Again, why am I taking the time to show it to you? That's one province, if you will, to the south. And I don't know how far north we go with these. I'd have to come in and do some serious inspection. Looks like we go right up to the line, the county line, but it's so low res, it's not going to really help. But you can see the squares that make up the drill points. Uh, looks like we have a few up here on the north, but again, it's so, so grainy. Here's a high resolution shot of the area. Well, not going to help. And up to the north we go. So how close do we go till we get to the earthquake? I mean, I look within six to 10 miles. And at this point, it's beyond that. But it is on the edge of the crater. So whether there's a drill point there or not, we won't know because of the imagery, of course. The energy is coming in from the northwest. Now that's just where we're starting. The energy comes in from the northwest. I had to tell you all of that to get into the United States. You have to understand where the energy comes in from so you know what happens when it comes into North America from the northwest. And when the energy comes in from the northwest, it has an impact into the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. And at this point, I'm going to turn on the last 24 hours worth of earthquakes here in the United States. Last day, 24 hours, 0.0, .0 and greater. And as that's populating, I'm going to turn back on the Craton map really quick and urge you to look on the west coast where the accretionary belt is, the green again. Now the green goes into the purple. And the purple is over at the California-Nevada border, basically. All right, just remember that because now we have to go look at the tremors. These are not exactly earthquakes. They're vibrations as the plate shifts. So here, for instance, yesterday's tremors. We're always about a day behind on the tremors, just so you know. Uh, that's from Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. 639. Now that's an increase from the day before, which on the 12th, we had 499. Let's just say 500. So there were 500 tremors two days ago mostly across Washington, going right down to the Oregon border, and then a cluster up in Vancouver Island, again, two days ago. Then yesterday, the cluster shifted to the south. It was up in Vancouver, then it shifted to the south. Stayed just vibrating heavily across all of Washington, right down to the border with Oregon again. Now we can go back. This has been going on for like seven or eight days at this point. Here we are back on the 7th. We have 510. And again, we're centered in Washington with a cluster down in Oregon, right at the border of California. Go forward to the 8th, and it breaks out even more in both spots, in southwest Oregon and in Washington. Then carry on to the 9th, and it focuses back in on Washington with just a little cluster down in northern California, shifted further to the south, basically. Then, on the, ele on the 10th, I'm sorry, it breaks out again down to the south even more. Southwest Oregon, Northwest California, and Washington again. Go forward to the 11th, Washington moving, just Washington, right at the center. Go forward to the 12th, Washington and Vancouver. The north side starts to shift. 
Go forward to yesterday, and it's all of Washington again, and we're back down in California. There's a line in California of tremors. It's a very distinct shape on these tremors. Now, each one does have a magnitude assigned to them, but the magnitudes are actually going up now. They're in the 2.0 range. So we're normally at zeros and ones assigned to these, and they're not really breaks in the plate. So it's not like a fault is breaking. Each one has a separate vibration as the plate is shifting. And when it starts to get up into the two range, that's pretty hefty shifting. You might actually start to feel it, the shifting, the vibrating. People might start to report booms and rumbles. There may be deformation that takes place the longer this goes on. We've seen these go on for weeks and maybe in a few instances, maybe even a couple months, these have gone on for these shift events. Slow slipping, as the professionals call it. An episodic tremor slip, as they call it too. So what's causing it though? Let's go over to the USGS map. Here's the Juan de Fuca fracture zone out here in the ocean. And these jagged edges belong to the Pacific Plate. And the Pacific Plate has all the energy traveling around it coming in through Alaska and coming into the North American Craton from the Northwest. The energy comes in from the Northwest and these jagged edges are kind of shaped like that. They actually point into the spots that are shifting on land. So this whole arm of the Juan de Fuca here matches with Washington here. From the pinnacle tip out off the coast of Vancouver, where we have a little shifting going on, and going down to the axial seamount. This is a volcano out here. It's like a notch or a nodule that's sticking out of the western side of the Juan de Fuca. And everything from here down to here is shifting. Then we get down here to the south, southwest Oregon, down to northern California. That's shifting too. Now I would call this the northern arm of the Juan de Fuca and the southern arm of the Juan de Fuca. And parallel to them over on land, this is taking place. All the red dots, all the shifting. The tension or the power is coming in from out in the ocean where the red lines are, where the fracture zones are, as it flows in from another region entirely. Think of this like a bathtub, where we're looking down on the top of a bathtub. This is the bottom of the tub, and this is the side or top of the tub. And the energy is breaking up and coming up the side, coming up into up here on land, and vibrating down below as the plate is shifting, vibrating as the plate is moving. So when this happens, when this starts to shift, we've seen in the past large earthquakes either accompany this while it's shifting or shortly after it's done shifting. There's compensation movement on one or both sides of the area that shifts. And it's shifting here across Washington, Vancouver Island, and going down into southwest Oregon and northern California. So pretty much all this is shifting. Now it's centered around Washington. But that would mean the area to the north and the area to the south will compensate as this area shifts. So the center is shifting. The area to the north, area to the south will move. Well, connected to the south is the San Andreas. You see the thick red line that goes down through the Bay Area, turns into the Hayward Fault for a minute there, and then goes further down across Southern California. That's the famous San Andreas. So that's like a road that flows, or a river that flows out of the Juan de Fuca. And then over to the east, we have the Craton Edge. Now, I have arrows showing which way to expect the energy to flow out of this area. So all of this is shifting right now. And look, over to the east, we have our arrows pointing into Idaho, Yellowstone, and making a diagonal line through Montana following the Craton Edge. Compare the Craton Edge in Montana to the earthquakes today. This is 24 hours worth of earthquakes. Dead ends into the park. Yellowstone National Park is right on the edge of the Craton, where the purple meets that brownish rusty color up in northwest Wyoming. So the line of the Craton edge, we have super volcanoes along it. And not just there, over in California too. I'll get into that in a minute. Then a spread of earthquakes going across and down over to the east, going through Oklahoma and over into Missouri on the New Madrid Seismic Zone. This is today's quakes. Southwest Missouri getting hit. Pretty rare. This is down next to Springfield, east of Joplin, right on the arrow. And there's hot spots again here today. Hot spots. Now there's a red flag fire warning going on. Extreme winds, they're telling nobody to start any fires. And all day long today, right where the earthquake is, 
hot spots appearing and I can go show them to you if there's any dispute. So that rules out any farmers burning their fields because there's a specific warning not to do that. And let's go down and show it to you here in Missouri. New hot spots appearing today. Here they are marked in black and Southern Illinois, by the way, red flag warning. And let's just take this back. Look, this is today. Look at this. Starts and just goes poof. And then that brings us up to current. And it's going all the way across the New Madrid seismic zone and Wabash Valley seismic zone. Now, Southern Illinois, Indiana, and Western Tennessee and Kentucky. Or no, Western Kentucky. In a ring or a line around where we're not supposed to have any fires going on at all. High winds and they just go on and off for five minutes or less. They flicker on and off like a Christmas tree almost. These are bur bursts of heat out of the center of the craton. Out of the New Madrid seismic zone, which I can show to you here. This is the New Madrid seismic zone. And it's an N-shaped bend in the plate. This is the Mississippi River Valley that goes down to Louisiana. And going back to the west, the craton makes a bend down through Texas. Makes a U-shaped bend and goes back up to the west-northwest, up into Colorado, and all the way back up to Yellowstone, like I just showed it to you. Now, these hot spots that are showing up are all in conjunction with this seismic activity that's taking place. It cannot be a coincidence. That beam came beaming in, that purple beam came beaming in last week. Now, there's other things that have happened, which we'll get into in a second, down in Arizona. I gotta talk about that, but first things first, let's just go look up this rare Canadian earthquake, eh? 3.6, Ontario, Canada. Come on, everybody, we can sing it along. Oh, Canada. I don't know much more than that, though. Sorry, guys, I'm from the States. All right. So let's go put these coordinates in. Go see what's there. Okay, uh, earthquake epicenter. This is southeast Quebec. And I'm not seeing anything of any significance here nearby. You know, sometimes we'll zoom in and we'll see place marks for volcanoes. Let me turn the volcano place marks on. I don't think we have anything marked up here. Pretty sure we don't. Let's back it out. See if we have anything nearby. Oh, wow. Hey, hold on. We've got hot spots over here to the east of our earthquake, our rare earthquake. We have rare hot spots out here in Canada. Wow. What do we have along up here? What could be burning? It's forests. Well, that's all there seems to be. Looks like we have some kind of cleared areas here, but that could be for quarry. Of some guy. Wow, it keeps on going. Whatever this is. Oh, wait. Hey. Yeah. Okay, well, that's odd. We've got pipeline there. Where's the pipeline coming from? Why would we... Why do they have a pipeline there? Ah, grainy imagery again on these pads that are in the woods. Do they have a pumping operation here? I, I'd just be shocked if Quebec has a pumping operation I didn't know of. Well, I'm not going to be able to determine from the aerial photography, that's for sure. Here, let's just keep zooming in and see what we got. Look, we've got a pad next to each one of these hotspots. Yeah, and a little airstrip right there. I'm curious. Quebec pumping operations. Do we have more? There's another hotspot. And another pad in the woods. But it's grainy. Again, we're not, we can't see what's there. Got to be related. There's another one. There, there's more down to the east-southeast. Hold on. Ah, do we have better imagery here? Uh, a little road in the middle of nowhere? What the heck? Those are ponds. Nothing. Nothing that I can see at this one. There's just roads. Okay, I have to do this, guys. We have to look it up if we got a rare hotspots and we have a rare earthquake. What if they're related? I mean, it's too many. We're having too many of these. 
these hotspots within a vicinity, even if it's even within the same province. But if they're along the same line and they're on the same day, I have to pay attention to that. So I don't know what to make of it. If they are pumping operations, that would explain flare-offs. Now, speaking of flare-offs, man, oh God, how are you ready for a story and a half? Dude, okay, let's just get into this. I have to turn our seven-day feed back on. A rare earthquake struck in Arizona yesterday. 3.3 magnitude. People contacted me saying, hey, what's up with the earthquake in uh, Arizona? Did you see it? I said, oh my God, here we go. So let's go pull the coordinates. Here's the story. Several years ago, 2015, five years ago, I had just started my live stream. And one morning, I was looking at the weather satellite. And we were looking at visible in the West Coast, on the West Coast. And I happened to catch something that was just very strange. Let me show it to you. Dutch since sunset crater. And go to videos. There. June 3rd, 2015. And then revisiting that a year later in 2016. But June 3rd, 2015, this happened. I put out a video when I was looking at satellite imagery and steam appeared coming from the east side of Sunset Crater at San Francisco Volcanic Field in Arizona. And let me full screen this so you can see it. Now you're gonna have to look a little close but you should be able to see these flowing steam plumes and this is this splotch here is the volcanic field itself. Off the east side of the volcanic field steam and then it vaporizes by the time it reaches over to the county line. This is at about sunrise. And I made this video and put it out and just said steam erupts from the east side of Sunset Crater, San Francisco Volcanic Field. Now that you've seen this little steam event that I captured, wait do you hear what happened when I put out the info. When I put out the info, the mainstream media picked it up and everybody in the world who hates me picked it up and they mocked and ridiculed me in mainstream media stories. Now let me show you where the steam came from. It came from the east side of this, this splotch. The new earthquake has just struck on the south side of San Francisco volcanic field. And all of these are different craters, spatter cones, lava flows, and that steam came from over here on the east side. Now here's the Smithsonian place mark for the San Francisco volcanic field on the east side of Flagstaff. Now to seal the deal on how crazy that all got, let's go back over and search just all and look who weighed in on this. Mainstream media and the National Park Service. The National Park Service weighed in on this and we'll take you over and just read you a few of these things but uh here here's az central where they commented on my story social media created hype wednesday about a plume of smoke and i didn't say smoke i said steam and they they slip up in the article later they refer to steam but plume of smoke reportedly seen rising from sunset crater volcano north of flagstaff but Arizonians won't need to take cover from a volcano anytime soon. Volcanic eruption anytime soon. According to a statement from the Chief of Interpretation at Sunset Crater Volcano National Monument, National Park Service, Cecilia Shields, the online reports are all false. Contrary to a website called DutchSense.com, which said the volcano was releasing steam on Wednesday, Shields said that park rangers didn't report any activity. The U.S. Forest Service rep was performing prescribed burns near A1 Mountain, which was producing smoke about 30 miles west of Sunset Crater. Okay, they were trying to say that that steam was smoke from a control burn on the west side of Flagstaff. They were trying to say the steam that was coming from over here was on the west side. Here's Flagstaff from A1 Mountain down here. 
A1 mountain down here, and they tried to say that the steam from over here was from that, from the day before. Total asinine, totally crazy, and they smeared me in the news big time over that. Now, where's the National Park Service statement on me? Hold on. This, this part's funny. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. National Park Service debunks volcano rumors. Oh my gosh. Am I going to find the actual... Mm -mm -mm. Well, let's go there. Let's go to the debunk. The Herald Extra by David Kennedy, David Kennard. What a Kennard. Mm -mm -mm. DutchSense.com. Boy, the actual National Park Service story is not just readily coming up, I don't think. No, it's not. Uh, it's, let's see, Sunset Crater. I gotta find it. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's, it's got its own wiki. No. No. On June 5th, 2015, a website with satellite images. Oh. It's from the GOES 16, or from the GOES satellite. Reported steam rising from the crater. Not from the crater. That's a, mis that's a misstatement too. It's from the east side of the volcanic field, not the crater of one volcano. Leading to fears that Sunset Crater was erupting. The cause of the steam was later determined to be a forest fire. No. And geologists stated that the volcano is extinct. Oh no. Oh, what a tragedy. What a tragedy. Oh, look, they've all weighed in on it. Arizona Geology blog spot. Everybody. Oh, here it is. National Park Service response to Sunset Crater eruption claim. Now it's an eruption claim. My God, this is on NPS.gov, guys. June 4th, 2015, from Cecilia Shields. Oh, my God. Flagstaff, Arizona. The National Park Service has received numerous inquiries about the possibility of current volcanic activity at Sunset Crater Volcano. No. On the east side of the volcanic field, you blooming morons. Now let's carry on. The internet source of the purported eruption, and I said it <laughs> erupts steam. Eruption is based on a black and white satellite image. Yeah, that's what goes is in infrared, you... Oh. The report is not from an academic source. Yes, it is. It's from GOES or part of a science agency. It's from me, so I guess that's not that's true. Such as the United States Geological Survey. Furthermore, no activity has been observed on the ground by park rangers staffing the National Monument. Well, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, that's if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's there to hear it. Does it make a sound? Well, technically, a sound is something you hear, so no, but it makes an audio wave, I guarantee that. Whether anybody hears it or not doesn't matter. Sunset Crater Volcano, part of the San Francisco Volcanic Field, is an extinct cinder cone. Local cinder cones are created by a one-time eruption event and are not known to erupt any more than once. Sunset Crater Volcano erupted over 900 years ago, making it the youngest cinder cone in a field of over 600 volcanoes. It is now extinct and not anticipated to erupt again. According to many geologists, the San Francisco volcanic field is still considered to be active. So it's possible that an eruption could occur during the next 1,000 to 5,000 years somewhere east of Flagstaff, Arizona. Come visit the Sunset Crater National Monument to see for yourself. Learn more about your part. Well, look, guys. First of all, Sunset Crater, I mean, it doesn't matter. We're not talking about Sunset Crater. It's just Sunset Crater's on the east side of the San Francisco volcanic field. And the steam was coming from the whole east side of the volcanic field. And now we have a new earthquake, rare earthquake, at the San Francisco volcanic field. Up to the north, we have another set of earthquakes. This is next to a place called Dutchman's Draw Volcano. Yeah, of all the names, right? Dutchman's Draw. Well, let me show it to you. 
saw another cluster of earthquakes north of the San Francisco volcanic field and another volcanic field. And here's the earthquake epicenter. There is Colorado City. And here is Dutchman's Draw, Black Rock Canyon, unnamed C. Miller Butte, Wolf Hole Mountain, also to the north, Sky Ranch, Gray Knoll Butte, Pine Valley Mountain, Sullivan Knoll, Crater Hill Butte. That is the oldest of the old cinders. Cinder Cone. Santa Clara Volcanic Cone. That, this is much younger. Santa Clara and Kolob. Kolob is black basalt on the side of it. It's kind of old. But let's see. Where is... Just lost it there. Santa Clara. There it is. Here is Santa Clara Cone. And this one has a Smithsonian place mark on it. Okay. So, earthquakes there. They go back up across over to the east and dead end into an oil pumping operation right up here in the east part, or the east-northeast part of Utah. Let me show that to you. So we go up to the east-northeast and we dead end right about here. Uh, I think the actual earthquake coordinates are going to take us in right here west of Huntington. And that's no coincidence because west of Huntington is where we start with our oil pumping operations. And you guys, this is very famous. There's tens of thousands of drill points all the way across here. So I shouldn't even need to show you. But if you don't know about it, it goes all the way down here where I have the place mark where it says oil. This is randomly placed on one of the wells here. And then it goes into the tens of thousands once we get across the mountain range up here. I mean, it really picks up in the number of drill points. All these little white areas. And then it goes across over the mountains, through the mountains. And it carries on over on the other side. And when I say through the mountains, I'm not joking. Look. And into the valley over to the east. And it starts to look like a grid on the ground from how many there are. Just goes through the fields, through the mountains, over the hills, and through the woods. We just keep going and going and going with our drill points here. Okay, well, why am I showing that to you? It's a line of quakes. Going from San Francisco up to Dutchman's Draw, or C. Miller, and then up to the east-northeast, dead-ending at our pumping operations here and here. What's in between the two? What's in between southwest Utah and the pumping operations? Let me show you. There's just one set of quakes in between the two. So between the pumping operations, whoops. Come on, there we are. So here's Dutchman's Draw down to the south, Santa Clara and all those that I just showed you. And in between the two, going up to the east, northeast, you see it, a series of other volcanoes centered out over to the east, but it's pretty obvious. Here, Thousand Oaks, Heaves Mountain, East Cedar, Cedar Mountain, Little Black Mountains at the center point where the other earthquakes are. Up to the north, we go back to Yellowstone and that line of quakes on the edge of the Craton. Coming out of Montana, dead ending into the park at Yellowstone. Now let's turn back on our... Oh, and by the way, the people who said there was no relation between the steam and the volcanic field and try to blame it on a fire. What a joke. You know, I'm so tired of everybody denying everything. It's getting really annoying. It really is. Just deny everything. You know, deny the beam, deny the fires, deny the hotspots, deny the volcanoes, deny the fracking earthquakes, deny the craton edge earthquakes, deny earthquake forecasting, deny harp, deny weather modification, deny DEW. <laughs> I mean, that's just off the top of my head, man. You guys got to stop. Now you got a denial problem, man. And it ain't me. Yeah, I just have to point that out. Now, let's go over here on the West Coast. So, let's go across Oregon. What's going on in Oregon? Well, actually, maybe we should start up in Washington. Remember, Washington is slow slipping. All those thousands now of tremors going across the state of Washington, up into Vancouver Island, and going down into Oregon. So, there's only a couple of earthquakes. Two on the Seattle Fault, and one over at a place called Nile, Washington. Negative 0.9 kilometer depth. We're up inside of a mountain, up above sea level. Let's go see what's there. 
The rest of the earthquakes are up in the Puget Sound, right where we're shifting. Oh wait, this is where a fire happened last month. Month and a half ago, fire happened right here. Dang. A fire happened there, and now we have an earthquake. I mean, they're right next to each other, guys. Within like a couple hundred feet. Or the sudden outbreak on a clear day. You guys remember that? Wow. Okay, wow, all right, well, fire earthquake. Up on the Seattle Fault, we can assume and correlate that with the thousands of tremors shifting and out here on the Olympic Peninsula. Wait a second. Wait a second. Ah, dang, of all the places. Forks. Ah, I'm going to go sparkle in the sunlight. Are you on Team Edward? You know, sparkle in the sunlight. I got the the Cullen clan up there. They're going to... Let's go zoom in on the area. Forks, Washington. You guys know about... You guys know about Forks, Washington? Well, just so happens to be the only spot in Washington I ever went. Here. Dutch since Forks, Washington. 2011. Another story. 2011. An earthquake happened in Japan. Wait. Dutch since... Washington radiation. See, that brings it up. You gotta be kidding me. Man, they buried it. Okay. Dutch since Washington radiation. I can't believe it. They're burying the dang thing. They're burying the dang video. Here, I was on the news about it, guys. I was on the dang news about it. Maybe I need to spell my name the other way. I was on NBC Nightly News. Okay. We're going to find this. It's the last thing I do. We're going to find the Washington readings. Here we are. Radiation test in Forks, Washington. So, the earthquake happened in Japan. And when it happened in Japan, it supposedly blew up the nuclear reactor after a meltdown or something, hydrogen buildup, and supposedly there was radiation coming across that was going to kill everyone. Well, the EPA turned off their us? radiation monitoring. And when they did that, nobody knew what their levels were. So I got Geiger counters and drove across the whole country, starting on the East Coast in North Carolina, driving back to Missouri, driving from Missouri across to Kansas, to Colorado, to Wyoming, to Oregon, or through Idaho to Oregon to Washington. And we went to Forks, Washington. And I went right out on the beach of La Push here and did another radiation reading. As it was raining, and this is a month and a half after the big one, uh, let's see, March, April, May, June, three months after the big supposed release so it just so happens that's the only place in Washington, the beach of La Push and Forks, Washington, where I went to take the radiation readings. And that's where the earthquake is. Let's go get the coordinates and again see how close we are because, man, that's close. That is super close. That's freaky close. Okay, definitely close enough. Not going to get into it too hard, guys, other than to let you know I've been there and that's where the quake is. Now, let's go down into Oregon. Look up this 1.9. What's going on there? Scott, Scott's Mills, Oregon. It's not an explosion, but it is a quake. So, we have to go look it up, at least see what's there. Wow, I'm surprised they got a quake listed there. Oh, wait. Oh, pop, pop, pop. Hot spots there from yesterday. A whole line of them. Whole line of hotspots all the way around. Look at that. So yesterday, hotspots, fires detected. And let's see if we have a temperature. Yeah, 999 Kelvin, like 1,200 degrees. Pretty hot, guys. 730 Kelvin. Check it out. So significant, again, to have the earthquake next to the hotspots. Amazing. Okay. Let's go down to Southwest Oregon, where we have the same sized earthquake, a 1.9. This is right where those tremors were. 
Oh, wait, it's an explosion. An explosion, guys. An explosion, like anybody's going to be exploding anything out there with the fire warnings. And whoever's blowing me up on my phone, sorry, guys, I'm not going to answer. Hold on. Okay, sorry guys. Again, it, I, I won't be answering messages or phone calls while I'm in the middle of an update. All right, now, 1.9 and 1.9. An explosion to the south and up to the north next to a hot spot. Do we have any hot spots down to the south? Down next to where the explosions are. Well, I'll be damned. Look at that. We have two hot spots from yesterday. Again, yesterday, 461 Kelvin. That's like 600 degrees or something, and 532 Kelvin, so like 650 or 700. Two hot spots right next to where the explosion is today. Or wait, this isn't an explosion. This is, this is an explosion. The other one wasn't. And then the one in between was a 2.0. Is that an explosion? Hold on. Another explosion. Dang, you guys sure got a lot of exploding going on out there. Especially at a time where you got a high fire warning. No wonder you have so many fires. You're just setting so many explosions out there. Boom, all over the place. That's what it is. Exploding here and there. No biggie. Anything here? There are hot spots over to the east. Wait, this is where we were shifting. This is where we were previously shifting next to Eugene. But this is also right next to a series of hot spots. Dang. Okay, so an earthquake out here at the pinnacle tip of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. Let's go look up the Juan de Fuca again. So Juan de Fuca right here, and you see the arrow shape on it pointing into where we were shifting and where we have our explosions going on, right? Well, going down to the south, the San Andreas flows out like a river, and look what's coming off of the Juan de Fuca. A line of earthquakes. And let's go make sure we've got the last days turned on now. We don't want to see too many. Whoops. USDGS one day, 0, 0.0 and greater. So this is everything since yesterday at 4 o'clock, basically. Central time. Here we are. So, line of quakes. Like I said, coming down the San Andreas. Going first stop to a volcano called the Geysers. Cobb, Anderson, the Geysers. Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Depending on which earthquake you click on, you will either get Cobb, Anderson, or the Geysers. One of the names tells you what's there. The Geysers, obviously. But we can put the coordinates in. First stop along the way where we start to swarm out at a volcano that's been drilled. And you'll see this is a common factor now going down through the rest of California. This thing flares up, this volcano, and the drill points here flare up when energy is introduced into the system. So when the plate finally releases the energy in, to the rest of the United States or North America, the Juan de Fuca, I mean, when the Juan de Fuca plate, that that actually translates into Northern California. goes right down through it, following these red lines. And the first stop is a volcano, a weak point in the plate. Second stop, just south of Mount Diablo. Again on the San Andreas coming off the Hayward Fault. Let's go look at the red line again. We're going down and across. And a volcano right in here. Diablo Peak. Mount Diablo. Then going down and clustering out on the creeping section of the San Andreas. New Idria, California. And we'll pull the coordinates here to show you why we're stopping. Instead of carrying on down to the south, you would expect this to go all the way down, wouldn't you? Instead, we get down to here, we jump over and go down to the southeast tip of the valley. And that's what just happened with the new earthquake just struck down at the southeast tip of the valley in white here. See that? 2.6. But a diagonal line goes from up here to down here. And I'll just put the coordinates in and show you. New Idria, there's something at the location. The San Andreas, of course. You'll be able to see it in the topography of the mountains themselves. Right here. So 
all the way down. This is the San Andreas making that diagonal line. The red line going the same way that I showed you on the USGS map. But why do we stop here? Zoom in and show you. There's the earthquake epicenter. And look, see where it says frack wells? These might as well be oil wells, or very might well be oil wells. I have the mark as frack wells. But we have tanks, pumps, jacks, and pipelines. There, there, there. You can see the shadows of the wells across the field. And we go down here on the south side of the field, and there are more. So why do we jump off the San Andreas? Why don't we stay on the red line? We jump off the San Andreas, where the drill points pick up. And the drill points go in a line across down to here. Down to the east-southeast of the valley. And I can show it to you on Google Earth. The most recent earthquake just struck right down here. Let me pull the coordinates so we can be pretty exact. The new 2.6. East-northeast of Ridgecrest. Yeah, I guess it is east-northeast of Ridgecrest, but that's kind of an odd way to think about the quake. Wait, I just grabbed the wrong one. No wonder. Hold on. Get all the smaller quakes out of there. Well, where did it go? Hold on. There was another 2. I promise you there was another 2.6 right down in here. Where did it go? Was it yesterday? Dang it. Okay, it's older than 24 hours. But I guess I'm just going to have to ask you to imagine it. I'm not going to go open up the other feed. It's a dang 2.0 earthquake. But we talked about it in my last update, and it struck right down here, the southeast tip of the valley. And that led me to look up this right here, which I showed you in my last video. The only reason I even want to bring it up, it's two of the same size quakes. One up here, one down here. One to the north, one to the southeast. Same size, goes across the valley. It's normal. Now we have a 2.6 out at Ridgecrest. So that's an additional 2.6. And the line of earthquakes here at Ridgecrest speaks for itself. It's going northwest to southeast. So wait a second. There's a line of earthquakes in Ridgecrest going up to the northwest, going down to the east-southeast. Look up to the north. Look at this. At the super volcano at the California-Nevada border, on the California side of the border, it too is going northwest to southeast. Now wait. Third one seals the deal. Line of earthquakes going northwest to southeast along the California coast. Then, Northern California, another line of earthquakes going northwest to southeast. It all points back up to here. That's shifting. That I showed you with all the red dots. Okay, now on the Nevada side of the border, the earthquakes make a southwest to northeast. Or a line to the east, if you will. Going over to our arrow, and the arrow tip is where we just talked about here in Utah. So arrow tip is moving. The back end of the arrow is moving. It's all traced back to here, and it's all trying to flow out, across, and over. It's being pushed up here, and it's trying to go over and across, up to the East Coast. And we have a new shift that's taking place now, which has not released the energy down into California yet. This is just the beginning of what we'd expect. A stack of earthquakes here. Every spot where you see just a couple of earthquakes now, we are going to swarm out. I'm expecting still, and I'm not canceling the warning, four different noteworthy earthquakes across California in the next few days. Once this slow slip releases its energy, once all those little red dots I showed you release the energy into California, I would expect two noteworthy earthquakes on the north side of California and two central and south. And then a fifth one on top of that, which I'll talk about in a second. So the four earthquakes should be in the upper four to low five range. The first should strike here. Or, well, I won't know which one's going to be first, but of all the four, I would lean towards the north side going first. So up here near Eureka, near 5.0, and Bay Area right in the middle next to Napa Valley, north side of the Bay Area, San Francisco. Two upper fours, or low fives. Central and Southern California right here along the California-Nevada border, in between our two sets of quakes. That's pretty much the supervolcano going over to Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes. That's Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. 
but right next to it, in between the two, California-Nevada border. And then here, in between the cluster at the supervolcano and Ridgecrest, which puts it into Owens Valley. That's the four earthquakes we're going to look for, and they should be significant in the upper four range to low five. And then the fifth quake, to top it all off, if the other four hit, I should say, if the other four hit, then we should see a cumulative total quake strike down here in Southern California. And I've warned East LA down to San Diego. And in between the two is where we watch the, what is that like, Huntington Beach and Laguna and over to the east all the way to Salt Lake City. And they would get the combined total of everything coming down, which could be bigger than 5.0. And that should all happen soon. How soon? Well, we're waiting on the slow slip. The slow slip, all the little red dots, which I will open up one more time just in case you're just now tuning in and you're watching live on Twitch. All these. So whether this goes down, let's say this drops off today. You know, it refreshes tomorrow and there's two. There's 600 now, but let's just say it dies out completely. When the slow slip stops, all right, then look for a release to happen, like the last time. When Vancouver Island shifted with thousands of tremors just across Vancouver Island, with just a handful going down here in lower 48 U.S. After this shifted, it shifted for weeks with thousands of these little red dots. Then 7.7 .7 earthquake struck when that finished on the north side of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. So in other words, all this shifted here and then boom, 7.7 .7 earthquake struck next to the cause of the tsunami. It was on the same day that Hurricane Sandy was coming ashore in 2012. So the 2012 slow slip after it finished resulted 7.7 .7 earthquake on the north side of the Juan de Fuca. Then significant size quakes went across the United States to top all that off. So is that going to happen again? Well, it's been going now for a week. It could go for longer, but the longer it goes, the bigger I would expect it to get. You can't move on one side, Washington, without moving on the other sides, north and south. Well, and technically east, over to Yellowstone. Everybody from Yellowstone back up to Vancouver Island and the Hecate Strait, all the way down through California, we all have to watch this. Look, I mean, what more do you need? You have new diagonal lines of quakes, new little swarm outbreaks, and they're hitting at the volcanoes and drill points, going all the way down to Southern California. I have not talked about Southern California yet, but Southern California, one final diagonal line of earthquakes going northwest to southeast. It's the whole state. East and west side. All goes back and focuses back in up here, and it all comes down and focuses them down here. So it starts up here, and goes down to here. Once it goes down to east-southeast and reaches Southern California, tries to reach over on the edge of the craton. And that takes us back to where I started the update, which is the spread of earthquakes going across the craton. And the professionals, in denial about that, said it couldn't happen. They were freaked out when I showed it to them, said I was faking earthquakes. That was their explanation. I said, is that your final answer? I, I literally said that back to them. I'm like, is this your final answer? And they're <laughs> They're like, yes, get out of here. And I'm like, dude, okay. And well, here we are. They said it was chance and coincidence. And that was years ago. It happens every week this way. There's a flow going from the West Coast to the East Coast. But here's the thing I think everybody needs to understand, including the professionals. When they denied that this could happen, they said it's impossible for a 3.0 earthquake on the West Coast to cause a 2.0 earthquake on the the Midwest or East Coast. The laws of, what did they say? No, they sent me laws of, oh man, what, what were the equations? Elasticity. Elasticity equations. Elasticity equation law says that the plate will absorb and uh, it's just not big enough of a push. It's not enough energy. And I said, you're fundamentally misunderstanding what I think is happening here. It's not that a three on the West Coast causes a two in the Midwest. It's that the three on the West Coast and the two in the Midwest are both caused by an inundating force that spreads out across the plate in a standing wave, I think, where there's equal-sized earthquakes spreading across the plate like a standing wave in a wave tank. And the earthquakes, I think, are either happening at the pinnacle or at the valley, at the peak or the valley, but they're equal-spaced 
and we only see a little loss of energy. So as this wave spreads across the tank, in this case, the United States, or Laurentia, North America, as the wave spreads across the craton, following the wave guide or the tank there, that the edge of the cratons like the tank. And the earthquakes are spreading out across the whole thing. And it's happening across the whole planet that way. And that's how we're getting equal-sized earthquakes about the same size, spreading out huge distances. This is the force that causes the earthquakes. So they were thinking that I was saying that the earthquakes, one earthquake was causing the other earthquake. And I may have even said that in the past. But as I studied it more, I figured it out pretty quick that there's an inundating force that first saturates the whole plate. And it follows it like a wave tank. And then, as it builds, then the earthquakes are dropped off along the way. And we get the same size all the way across the plate sometimes, if the push is big enough. Sometimes there is a step down in magnitudes, threes to twos to ones. But that's still not that much loss of energy across thousands of miles of a solid mass of rock. But it's not really solid, is it? There are edges across it that are like seams. So they freaked out hard when I showed it to them and denied it. And now I show it every day, and it's got to hurt for them because, man, they were really, really adamant about <laughs> denying it. But again, it leads to a relation between quakes, which they also denied. So I could see how that could be upsetting. I mean, they said there was no relation between quakes over distances. So you start to see a connecting power between them. Now, that's going to send a few people through the roof and off the edge. So here we are. Back to where I started. The deep earthquakes are hammering in on the underside of the plate. We're still watching for three more days in our 10-day watch for the potential of 7.0 activity to come in next to our deep earthquake. We've gone out to day 10 before, so uh, we got three more days to go in that. In addition, we have open silent zones that are going to be filled in with larger earthquakes than what are on both sides, Indonesia being one of them, right in the middle of that open silent zone. Let's get that 4.7 out of there. Right here in the middle of it. Going over to the west, same thing. And where our rings overlap, that further determines where to watch. Cyprus, I've got a warning. Going over in the Mediterranean, got to watch out for that. Italy, you're not done yet. You still have two more days to go in the previous push. Coast of Normandy was already hit, so I guess you could check that off the list. Same with over here in eastern Australia. Still mind-blown. And then over here across Central America and South America, where our rings overlap, we expect new activity here on the coast of El Salvador. Also over to the east, Jamaica and Cuba, and the swarm expected over in Puerto Rico. had already been hit, but now it's getting hit again. It's a lot for me to cover, guys. It's starting to get to the point where it's taking an hour and a half, two hours again for me to do an update. That's how you know we're going through it. Or getting ready to. Hawaii. To top it all off, even my Hawaiian viewers are getting a little bit of play and action out here. And over the past two days, you can see it. We're back at the Middle East Rift Zone. Going down to Loihi along the coast and up to Mauna Loa. Even going up on the north side of the big island now. North side. That's north of Mauna Kea. So Mauna Loa, Mauna Kea, Kilauea, and Loihi. And it's all centered right in the middle. So right in the middle, that's the Middle East Rift Zone. And that's going right up to the top of the crater of collapsed crater of Kilauea. The only thing I would tell you about that is the more earthquakes that happen there indicate a rising amount of pressure or force or power that's building in the magma chamber, which then spreads out to the other volcanoes. Hence the earthquake spreading over to Mauna Loa, Mauna Kea, Loihi. But recharge all at once. It's going to eventually blow, and when it does... You will see a new crater. They will have a warning on that. It won't, I, I don't, knock on wood. It could just happen at any time, but uh, I think that there will be at least a few days warning on anything that would happen out in Hawaii. But it's starting to swarm now. So just, you know, you may want to keep an eye on it. They will not get on and talk about it unless they see some actual inflation happening, like surface deformation or sulfur dioxide levels or start to increase then they would get out and warn everybody, the professionals. But uh, don't w count on that to the last minute. So watch the earthquakes. They kind of tell us what's going on. The more earthquakes there are, the more energy there is. If it goes totally quiet, that means building energy. The more earthquakes that are taking place, that means there's a release of energy. 
If it's releasing energy, I guess that could be good, but it would mean we don't want any more energy pumped into the area. And we know there is energy being pumped in with all the new deep earthquakes. I think one of my viewers did a count. I was reading in chat. I don't know. I didn't verify this. But so far this month, first 14 days of this month, it's now two weeks in, something like 80 plus, 80 plus different deep earthquakes around the planet. We would call that a deep earthquake event taking place when we start to get into that number. We get up above 100 different deep earthquakes in a month's time or so. That means something's going on down below all the planes. And that means large earthquake activity is due. You can't get a bunch of leverage on the underside of something and not see it come up and spread out and spread out across and away from whatever you're lever arming on the underside. I will be back if anything else goes down. Let me remind everybody, hey, if you're watching on Twitch, thank you for subscribing. I don't have a list of names here in front of me right now, but much love and thank you to everybody who subscribed there. That financially supports me. If you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, guys, over on Twitch, I don't know if you have Amazon Prime. A lot of people do. If you have Amazon Prime, they give you a free subscription to anybody you want on Twitch. You can come over and click a button on my channel and you get a free subscription if you're an Amazon Prime person. And a lot of people have that, especially for the holidays coming up, right? So that supports me. Then you can subscribe. That's whether you're on Twitch, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube. Some, some places call it follow, other places call it subscribe. But you can click a button to follow me and get my updates. That really makes a difference too. And then finally, you got to share the info. You're not going to see this on the news. All the professionals, or most of them, are still in denial. Because they previously denied. So, you know, you show it to them. They're not going to even acknowledge it, even if it's accurate. Because, well, of course, they don't believe it. And I know they're not going to acknowledge it, even if it's accurate. Because I sent them the how to forecast an earthquake method. Step-by-step -step directions, which you guys can go follow yourself. In my video, titled, How to Forecast an Earthquake. Step-by-step -step instructions. So you guys can repeat the test. I would encourage you to use the arrows that are on the map here. That's what they're on here for. So you guys can see which way do we expect it to go. I already have it memorized. But if you don't know where to look, you can watch the arrows and watch it go with the energy. Go from one area to the other and strike at these middle points in between our current sets of quakes. The fulcrum point, as we call it. And you'll see the energy equally distribute out across a whole area and drop off a whole bunch of the same sized earthquakes. And then when they start to go up, the magnitudes... So you go from fours to fives or from fives to sixes. You'll see it come your way. And then that actually reduces the fear of earthquakes. Once you see that there's a certain size earthquake coming your way, you can start to prepare for it, kind of like an arriving train or a storm that's coming your way. You hope it dies out, but hope for the best, plan for the worst. And that's what these arrows are on here for, so you can watch which way to go. I'll be back if anything else goes down, okay? Peace out. And look out for this as a premiere, saved and uploaded, hopefully, over on YouTube. They blocked my premiere last time. I premiered it, it came up live for the premiere, one second to go, the countdown timer was going, shut off by YouTube, and not allowed to premiere. They just put it straight to a video. It's crazy, I've never seen anything like it before. It totally blocked my video for like a day from being seen. Totally pissed me off. So, I'm going to try and do it again. I'm going to try and premiere it again. If they, if they do it again, it's somebody doing it to me then. You can say once it's a chance, coincidence, a mistake, a technical error. But if it happens again, we've got ourselves somebody trying to stop what I'm doing. And that, <laughs> that's not acceptable at this point. Uh, I, I've been proved right on all aspects of earthquake forecasting and on all aspects of directed energy weapons and the other controversial things that I talked about in the past. We'll see you later. Peace out.